Howdy folks. I'm just going to keep an eye on the um, frame rate. Let me know how the audio is. Uh, the audio may be slightly different. I've moved things around a little bit. I'm clearing up some stuff here. Just waiting for everyone to come along. I'm just talking to um, Laurie actually. I've been playing around with HDMI. Not with a lot of success, I'm afraid. Um, so I made the HDMI. Uh, I made the HDMI tile. I reflowed it. Lots of buzzing. Oh, that bit disconnected again. Tell me if it stops. It is bloody really annoying. Uh, hold on, what's going on here? Still buzzing. Um. in again see if that makes any difference less buzzing more buzzing give me the buzz feedback gone now marvelous um yeah as i was saying so i was playing around with the um with the tile earlier Unplug it actually safely. I hot plug these all the time. Probably shouldn't do that, but on these passive ones, it shouldn't make any difference. So there's a tile that I made up. Uh, it's the HDMI tile. Um, see the connector here? Well, the legs on this are really long, so if you look around at the other side. They actually poke through. And of course, like an idiot, when I reflowed it, I did it on the hot plate. And of course, because it's on the hot plate in molten solder, it pushes the legs through. So it, it was actually sitting too high on the board. I did try and press it down at the end of the reflow. But I obviously didn't do a perfect job because it's a bit dodgy. So when I was connecting a HDMI cable in, uh, depending on what angle I held the HDMI cable in I get different things on the screen 
Unfortunately, I haven't got the screen now. It's gone back. I, I borrowed my um, my partner's um, screen because it has a well, it has a DVI port and I had a HDMI to DVI connected, so I thought I'd use that. I mean, I do have a HDMI on this monitor, but if I do that, I won't be able to see what's going on. Um, so I wasn't. So I was kind of intermittently getting the signal, but not the signal I expected. It was just plain white, which isn't right. So, I mean, there could be a number of different things. I did try hand resoldering it, but I'm not convinced I've solved that problem. So, hmm, yes, it's an issue. Certainly not resolved. I mean, it could be that we've got the, um, the code wrong. I was trying to establish whether, I mean, the, the code I'm using is, um, Laurie's code. Um, which he got from Uxie, um, or a variant thereof, I'll post it. Just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, There is some debate about whether we've got this configured right or not. The problem could be to do with the way that the um, we're using the DDR capabilities of the output I/O pins on the i40, and there is some debate as to whether this is configured right. The trouble is. I can't find an example of this code being used where it kind of works, apart from a second hand. Booksy said it works. Type thing. Because when, I think when Laurie had, when you had yours working, you were using external PMOD and you were driving it single ended and relying on it doing the differential output. Whereas the code we're talking about. Let me bring the code up as well so that you can see it. I'm thinking about it, I want to put it here. We just switch to the right. Um, to the right window. What's this one called? HDYZ. That one. Probably make that slightly larger for you. But this is the way that we're using the differential IO output. So we're serially sending two bits, an array of two bits, and then those get clocked out on this uh, 125 megahertz clock by the um, by the IO section. And this is the uh, the net the positive part of the signal, I think, for clock in this case. I think we're looking at yeah, it's this clock here. So that's clock plus pin, and then this is clock minus pin. And in this case, what we pass in here are the inverted array of signals, the two output signals. And theoretically, by using this arrangement, we can, I believe, output at twice the rate and have it differential. Uh, Laurie says, I'm reasonably confident that the code should work. But I didn't get that working. I mean, I tried this afternoon. Trouble is, I haven't got the monitor now. It's the external one. I had it plugged in here earlier. Um, so I don't even know if we could mess with it this evening again. But the strange thing was, when I fiddled with the cable, I did actually manage to get a white, completely white screen signal if I held the cable in the right place. But it shouldn't be showing a white screen signal. It should be showing um, colour bars. So I don't know if that means anything at all. 
maybe me twisting the cable like that is actually doing something completely weird. I don't know. Either way, it didn't give me a working solution. It certainly didn't give me color bars output. Um, there was talk about these two being changed around. See, out zero here, we're sending the out bit one. And out one, we're sending the output zero. Maybe those should be the other way around. Because it says here in the note that D out naught and D out one swapped. Um, let's also, uh, let's go through the pin mappings right now. So um, if I look at the, um, uh, why can't I move this? Really annoying. I'll just squeeze this up a bit. Can you see the pin mappings I'm using here? Um, so in this case, if I look at do, do the color, does the color order matter? If I get blue and green and red mixed up, does that matter, Laurie? They should be sending out the same thing at the same time, right, in parallel. So it shouldn't matter if those mixed up. The important one is getting the clock right. So if we look at the clock here, we're using, um, sorry. We're using HMI N3 and P3, right at the top of that, that array of pins. So if I look at HGMI N3, uh, that's this one, that's A9, and the positive version is C8. If I look at Tile four, which is what's plugged in here, A9 and C8 are the first two. Uh, and tile pin zero, effectively, A9, is a negative. Now, if we look at the circuit diagram, the schematic, Um, you'll see on the tile connection D0 here P0 goes to minus TCK and P1 goes to plus TCK So the first pin is TCK negative, the second pin is TCK, CK, CLK positive. So that kind of fits with what I think we have. N3, excuse me, N3, uh, is A9, N3 is A9, uh, and that, oops, that corresponds to pin zero of the tile. So that should be right, and then the positive part of the clock is connected to C8, which is the next pin of the tile. So it looks, as far as I can see, it looks like I'm using the right pinouts. Um, but it's kind of weird that I get that white screen. Why would I get a white screen? Oh. <sighs>
maybe that's just a um, you know a false thing to follow But I know the clocks are working because I've tried out putting those uh, on these uh, pins which appear on the um, on the jacks and then I've looked at those on the scope and they are 25 and 125 megahertz there or thereabouts so I know I'm talking to the right tile and I know that those clocks are working right but I just do not see the picture very strange um, so I don't know if we can do any more on that really today I need to get hold of that monitor again and try some more things I guess um, I don't know if changing these would make any difference, i.e. the order 1 and 0, 0 and 1. Bear with me a sec. Yeah, I might be able to borrow that monitor for my partner. But we'll have to just wait for that. I don't think it'll make any difference, quite frankly. Like you say, my little monitor is very useful. Seven inch HDMI monitor. Yeah, nice. I mean, I did used to have this other display that I could use, but I kind of um, donated it. Um, so I only get to borrow it back occasionally now. Um, hmm. Yes, I can't see any. Um, easy way around this hmm I don't know if swapping those um bit orders around it's going to make any difference or not when UXE used it what did what did he use it with
Uh, Laurie was saying, I used the code with PMOD that UXE sent me on the Black Eyes 2. A short HDMI cable helped. Hmm. So this was on a Black Ice 2, not a Black Ice um, MX. <laughs> and which way round were these clock output bits on the Black Ice 2? Or didn't you use these um, these features? You didn't change those bits. So this this was the right bit order. One to naught and naught to one. Changing the bit of order would be worth a test. Well, possibly, yeah. Um, let me go and see if I can borrow that monitor for a sec. Bear with me. Yeah, if I hold it at this angle, you can see I just get a white screen. It's kind of weird. All right, let me just flip these bits around.
No, it makes no difference at all. It's really weird how I get that white thing there. It's like it thinks that's... Oh, that's getting really warm. I don't know if that's a signal or not. It's weird, isn't it? But yeah, swapping the signals around doesn't seem to make any difference, that's for sure. I'll just run that again, make sure it is running. Convinced, you know. I think that's something else. I don't know what it is, but I'm not entirely sure that's a signal. So changing them doesn't seem to make any difference. The fact that I'm getting this white screen flashing up is kind of weird. You know, is that a valid signal or is that just some other weirdness? So if I had RGB mixed up, would that make any difference, Laurie? Probably not, right? Laurie says changing RGB would just mix the colours up. Yeah, well that was my thinking. Because they're just working in parallel, aren't they? There isn't a dependency between them. I still don't get why I get this. I mean, that looks like it's got a valid signal, doesn't it? 
a valid signal, it's all white. But we're definitely not sending that, are we? It's meant to be colour bars. But that says to me that there is something slightly dodgy with the connector. And that could be, you know, as I explained earlier, the fact that when it was reflowed, the pins that hold the, um, the legs may have held it out of place. I did try and re hand resoldering it, but it didn't really um, work. I mean, I don't know if it makes any difference as well. This is doesn't have a HDMI input, has a DVI input. So I'm going from HDMI to DVI. Would that make a difference? I think with it flashing, it um, doesn't seem to want to give me any information. get to stabilize long enough to um, it's very annoying Doesn't seem to have an OSD. It's meant to be. Yeah, I don't think this gives me um, an OSD. There's no on-screen information. Uh, maybe that's because it's not a valid signal or something. Very annoying. when you can't find the position that it works in. What's waiting? I mean, I could try another um, tile, of course, to remap the pins. So the um, RGB order may be important. Um, let me change these two around then. Just in case.
That's what goes to a wound. Um, Interesting if it does carry the H sync and V sync. But I've just swapped two and zero around. Changing the middle one. That will be green, whatever happens, won't it? Oh god, I don't know anymore. It's all a bit random. I'm just not sure about this white pattern, whether that's got anything to do with it at all. That could just be a weird feature of this monitor when it gets the wrong signal. Double check which ones did I swap here? So blue is zero. Well, I just swapped those two around, didn't I? So I could swap these two around, I guess. That's the other permutation. It does rebuild when you change the PCF, doesn't it? Does warning about the clock make any difference? <laughs> so yeah, that's not making any... Um Swapping those around isn't making any significant difference. Right, let me um, take these back to what they were. I don't think this will change anything, but
No, I'm still getting the same um, same treatment. Clock speed reported look odd. Let me just show you that again. It jumps around. The clock speed reported the yeah, the X clock should be 125. It is, but this is the timing um, analysis. Um, the X5 clock is 125, I can assure you, because I've looked at it on the scope. <clears throat> but this is just warning from a routing point of view. It's saying from its timing analysis that um, the routing is falling short. In the make file, I use the same target you had in yours. So if, if I made that, one, two, five, it'd probably fail. Oh, it didn't remake it because I didn't change anything. Make file 25 error one. Two warnings, one error. Error max frequency for clock uh, X25 is 110. Fail, because I've set it to 125. So it thinks that the timing will fail at 125 megahertz. If I set that to something, you know, lower, like 100, it's normally OK. Uh, hi, iPost. Yeah, we're playing with uh, HDMI, but we're not having a um, great deal of luck, quite frankly. There's a couple of issues. One is uh, the reflow didn't work very well on the um, HDMI connector because the legs poked through, so it's risen it up. Um, so the connection is a bit dodgy. But even when we hold it, we're not getting um, a decent signal out. So if I rebuild this again, now of 100, it'll probably pass. Yeah, see that passes at 100 because it's it comes it reckons it can do 100 or 110 depending, you know that varies randomly depending on the build. So I'm not sure that that's the problem, because I know what you mean. You can often go faster than it reckons the timing should be. Well, I don't get, I don't get this white flickering though. You know, does that mean that there is a kind of semi-valid signal there, or what? But why would it be white? Why wouldn't we be seeing the colour bars? Um. Hmm. I mean, the only other thing I could do is perhaps try a different tile position. I don't know if that would make any difference. Um, it's worth a go though, isn't it? Let's try a different tile position. So if I comment this one out, I can't easily comment in this because it doesn't know. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's just, um, so 
It's worth trying a different tile, oops, just in case, I guess. Wouldn't hurt. Just to be um, comprehensive. It's like having a strobe behind me. It's very off-putting. You can see the reflection on the screen constantly. <laughs> very annoying. Uh, what tile shall we try? Um, let's have a look. So I'm just going to unplug this temporarily. Um, which tile looks good? So that's tile four. One of them is a bit dodgy and I can't remember which one it is now. Let's just do a quick um, check running something else, bear with me. Uh, Gonna remind myself which tiles work well and which ones don't. Um, uh, that's a good one. So what's the one next to that? So that's tile four. Free. It's weird. Tile free is good. Okay. Let's give tile free a go. as well as I remember otherwise I really messed myself up later. Or was it tile one? Yeah. Put back on that one, that's good. Um 
So I'm going to move to tile three. I'm not sure this will make any difference, but it's worth. Um, so let me just rewrite this then. So, uh, A9, A9, right. So, if we do tile three. Um, it's definitely not a real signal because why have I got a white screen now? I'm not even sending a signal to that yet. <laughs> so it's definitely not that. That's definitely not the problem. I don't think. Save. So we're going to try it on this point now. I think the white screen is um, ooh, is just something that's sending us off the track. Oh look, 99.55 on that tile. One of those IOs. How weird is that? Oh, let me change it. <laughs> It's nothing else. Let me just rebuild that again. Hold on. This is kind of weird. Can't quite work out what's going on here. Yeah, I'm getting consistently lower frequency results. <laughs> Which is odd. 
Let me just lower that down because it's just stopping things working. think it changed. Too clever for its own good. Yeah, I mean it's no different basically. We're still getting the same thing which is it basically not working. No better. I swap these around as well, but I don't think that's going to really make much difference. I'm not sure that that's our problem. come up with an even lower frequency this time. Um, mm. No, 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 it doesn't like it. Um, hmm. Trying the permutations, but I don't think it's making any difference. Ninety three megahertz that time. It gets worse. Interesting. Um, 
I think we're doing something wrong. I, I, I don't think it could be, it should be this difficult really. It's kind of odd. And as for this flushing business, I don't know. That's. It's like it kind of finds a signal there, but it's not happy with it. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any on-screen display diagnosis, which isn't very helpful. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything easy to try tonight, guys. I'm going to have to dig deeper into the um, into that. It's. Um, I'm going to move on to something else. I think nothing immediate I can think of to do. Um, the clock is definitely free. Yeah, just one B one B two B one B two. B1, B2, yeah, the first two signals. B1 being the negative one. Whatever the problem is, I don't think it's tile specific. Although clearly the IO performance changes. Um, I can't think of any other things that we could easily try. Still don't get this white screen business. That's confusing me. the negative and positive are in the wrong way. I don't think so. Uh, Laurie says, I'll try the code with my P mod on the Black Eyes MX tomorrow just to see if it works with the current monitor and see what the timing is. Yeah, if you can, mate. Right, I'm going to call it quits on um, this. We can move on to something else. So just let me, um, I've got to put this back because it's my partner's monitor and then I will be back shortly. And we can work on something slightly different.
Right, so, I mean, apologies for that not working. Let me just get some water. I'm just going to put you on mute for a sec while I get some water. Bear with me a sec, and then we'll get on with the next bit. Cat's decided to join us, although it's, she's eating. Um, right, so I, I made some changes. I can go through those in a bit. Let me do, let's do the update thing first. Um, just putting this back on the camera um update 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 so oh do you want to go out now people um the boards have been made I think they're still in China. Let me just check what the latest is. Hold on. Um, So according to FedEx, who have now picked up the board, I'm sorry, the PCBs in China, um, they've picked it up. It's obviously at their distribution um, place. So they're saying, yeah, it's in Guangzhou. Um, international shipment release export that was updated two o'clock in the morning Thursday their Thursday so that's that's a fairly recent update um, and they're, they they they're suggesting that the uh, scheduled delivery is next Tuesday um, but yeah we we've seen this before so. Fingers crossed, um, we'll have them next week, but let's just wait and see. So that's good. Um, that's for the boards. I've also got some components coming as well. Um, although I don't need all of these, to be fair. Um, good evening, AO London. Sorry, I just I only just seen your um, message there. Um, 
they're just the boards but I need to is I'm gonna uh, assemble the first um, batch so we're doing um, the, the development batch So we need to just cover that briefly before we go back into the code. Um, I think what I probably do is we do the the development bundle will be the uh, ICE Logic bus port, obviously um, the Black Ice next with hyper ram and hyper hyper flash on it um also i will add into that um we've got the prototype stroke patch boards so i'll include one of those uh, and the PMOD headers for those who want PMODs, they can you can just solder those in. They're quite easy, just 0 0.1 headers, inch headers. So it'd be one of those. Um, there will be a seven segment, which is this one. Let me just run that now. So you know which one I'm talking about. That's that one. Um, so I'll include that. I'll probably include the HDMI, assuming we can get it operational by then and what else do we have we have kind of VGA one a VGA tile and uh, oh I'll give you one of the right angled um, headers for debugging. You can have a choice. You can have either the right angle one, little dinky one, right angled one, or you can just have a regular male one, which um, stands up um, on the top of the board. That's for debugging. I'll include that as well. Damn it, I can't get the connector in. Did he? Like that, that's the right angle one. Or you can have a male upright, which doesn't have the shrouded header. I've got some of those as well. Um, what else? I think that's all of the tiles that I've got at this point. I'm still working on the stepper one, so those won't be available yet. Um, VGA, uh, seven segment, photo, P mod. And HDMI. Um, I was going to ask you guys about pricing as well. Um, the the bundle of the Ice Logic board and the Black Ice NXT mezzanine 
is going to be 119 um, dollars and um, these P mods I'm going to offer just as a patch one without the connectors as ten dollars if you want the patch ones it's fifteen dollars if you want the connectors on there all the other tiles are like fifteen dollars a piece um, and that's similar to what we were doing the you know things like the seven segment um, P mod for example uh, Laurie's asking f what header do you use at the moment I've, I've got one soldered in which is very ugly and it's one of those right angled ones but it's kind of lent over because I had to do, turn it upside down and get it on the back round the other way that's fixed on the new board so you don't have to do that um, I think I would pr probably prefer the male upright one but yeah, all depends um, because it's on the top of the board anyhow so it's just easier doing it upright what I'd probably do is I wouldn't solder it in what I'd do is I'd take the male upright one and I'd stick that in the end of the um, ST Link 3 IDC and then when I want to program it I just put that on the board and it will hold it in place because the holes are offset you don't need to solder them that's the easiest way um, so yeah the tiles the proto tile is like ten dollars or fifteen dollars for one with the P mod connectors and all the other ones like the seven segment one is fifteen dollars I think the HDMI, HDMI one I don't know price that what do you think it's a good price for the HDMI one assuming it works got to get it working first I think the VGA one was going to be fifteen dollars as well but anyway, I wanted to bundle those together as the development pack. Um, that the other thing is, if 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 you if you buy the development pack, there will be a small number of you buying the development pack, and I will automatically, when I make new tiles, I will give you the option to send you one of those out for testing. That I won't charge for, obviously. But only if you're interested in testing it because not everyone's going to want to test all tiles because there's going to be lots of different ones. Um, I posted saying, will you have a tile with audio and other stuff? The HDMI just has digital audio. Um, I was thinking of doing an audio tile, but the question is what we put on it. Um, You know, do you put a codec on it, etc. We kind of semi had this conversation before, so we need to discuss what we want on an audio tile and find some way of agreeing about what goes on there. But yeah, I think an audio tile, standalone audio tile, would be um, would be useful. I think on the HDMI tile, because you've got the digital connectors there, probably your best bet is outputting SP diff or outputting or inputting SPDIF through those jacks. I mean, you could combine the jacks to do a I2S if you wanted, but there is no standard I2S connector. Um, Ipo says, uh, for me, it would be an I2S chip. What do you mean by I2S chip? You can do I2S in, in the FPGA. You don't need a chip for that. You only really need a chip if you want to do the codec and if you want the combination, so like I2S, analog, in and out, and a monitor, audio monitor. A USB tile is definitely a possibility. Um, 
but we'd have to think about what we want the USB to do. You know, do you want like host connectors on there or what? What, what do you want the USB for? Um, but I do need to know who, who is going to want a development kit because uh, I need to start getting those build, built. So this week I can start getting the tiles built up that we have. And then when the boards arrive next week, I can, assuming they do arrive, I can then get those made as well. And then we're, I'll be in a position to start shipping those out to people and do them on batch kind of thing. For me, the USB would be for a USB joystick. So it, that it would be a HID device, wouldn't it? Um, so you'd want like a, a host connector on it, like a USB-A, I guess. And we could put a couple of those on a tile without a problem. In fact, we might be able to do a couple of hosts and something else, um, depending on height. Um, make up your mind, Twinkle. You're in or out. What is it, Twinkles? Hey. You just need attention, so you can say hello to folks. High intention cat. Hello, internet. Hello. You just need a, attention, aren't you, Twinkles? Mm -hmm. Purry cat. and get your fluff with my desk my stuff mm -hmm. uh, out of London I've seen some I2S to DAC ICs yeah you can get good codec ICs that do both digital and analog in and connect via I2C or something similar um what high intention today? Um, mm. hmm. Yeah, so we need to have a think about what we put in the audio time. Um, I did find a relatively low cost codec at some point, but getting hold of them can be difficult. Just like anything else is chip wise. Uh, Ail London says solar panel plus battery management module tile. Yeah, well, we can look at all of the kind of more um, industrial stuff work on some tiles for that but yeah battery management um, and battery powered um, if you want to go the solar panel route then we could we, we could put an MPPT on a tile as well as part of the battery management to make it more efficient
Um, I've also got the stepper tile I've got to finish. I've also got the brush DC tile which I've got to build up uh, and run some tests on. That's probably going to change a little bit which is why I'm not going to be providing those ones quite yet but that's probably going to be one of the ones that comes next. But there's all sorts we can do. Uh, Laurie's talking about finding a nice 40 host port. So who's going to want a kit? Let me know, please. And I'll start building them up over the next two weeks. Oh, damn that cat. Uh, and I'll make a list. And if you're on the list, you'll get one. If you're not, you won't. Because I won't do any more. Um, until next month, uh, in which case it will be a more general build for other folks um, who won't get free tiles um, as as we make them because they won't be testers and developers. Laurie says, "Folk dolly." I most definitely want a kit with everything. <laughs> uh, Ale London says that he can wait, or she can wait, or they can wait. Not in a hurry, quite busy till mid June. Poster saying I'm looking for a kit with HDMI and maybe P mods. So in other words, one of these and the HDMI connector. What about VGA? In seven segment. Is that not useful to you? Depends what you've got kicking around. If you've got an old VGA display kicking around, it's kind of useful. Um. I could possibly also get some microblades out, but they're just going to be prototypes at this point. They're not final versions. So I won't be charging for those. It's just if any of them work, I'll probably send them out for test purposes. 
if you want to develop a list. Yeah, the initial microblades I've ordered won't be the final versions. Well, I mean, they might. They might be similar, but they're definitely prototypes at this stage because we haven't built any of them before. So the chances are they could change. So if I if I give a few of those out, if I have a few spare, I will just give those away to you guys. The prototype blades I've ordered are, it's like an LED one. Um, there's one that will hopefully fit these kind of small um, LCDs, maybe uh, OLED. Um, I'm also doing one for the ESP32 with a mini on it, ESP32 C3 mini on it. And one of the blades is just like got a, a dual row pipe pin header on it, I think, which is just like a micro microblade breakout, effectively. Good for connecting to like a logic analyzer or something. Um, we'll, we'll do industrial tiles a bit later because we haven't decided exactly what to put on them. Rest and long. We need to see what the priority is. You're probably the first of the industrial users. What would you want tile wise in addition to the ones I've already mentioned? So, I mean, it would be what? 119 for the combination of the ice logic bus and the black ice next with all the fittings and fasteners um, plus 10 for the pack strip prototype I won't charge for the P mold parts for those Class doing for seven segment, same again for VGA. It's about one hundred and eighty dollars for all of those normally. If you went for like the seven segment VGA HDMI and. Uh, these as well as the obviously the ice logic board the ice logic bus fittings and all of the um and the black ice nxt but i'll also give out any future tiles if they're relevant to you and you want them as developers and i won't charge for those apart from maybe shipping all depends really. Are you back, Twinkle? I <laughs> don't think you want to know where you want to go today, do you? Mm hmm? Did you get kicked out? Is that what happened? Were you causing trouble? Oh. <laughs> so Western Long wants um can ethernet and plenty of ios well there's loads of ios um okay but the ethernet tile tiles availability of ethernet tiles will take some time because i can't i can't get the um the fies However, I have some gold dust here. Um, these are uh, LAN 8710As. 
I've got um, magnetics. Um, so I've got to do a prototype of these. Um, I can probably get can and Ethernet on the same tile if that makes any sense. Possibly. That's the next one of the next tile prototypes. So I'll be able to get one of those out to you, Weston. If you if you purchase a development kit, I'll give you a, an Ethernet tile when they're ready for testing. And I could put can on. I've got some different can chips. I have some dual can chips actually, which is quite interesting. As far as I.O. guys, these are good for I.O. Because he's got 24 FPGA I.O.s and um, at least four analog. Lloyd saying Ethernet is also difficult as you need code to drive them. A stack that drives RM2 is available on Saxon SOC or Litex. You can also drive them from the SDM32 as well. So you can use a QSBI to talk to an RM2. That's another way of doing it. Or SPI to RM2 inside the FPGA. Laurie, so there's a few choices. And Rust has some fairly small um, implementations of IP stacks and stuff as well. And Ethernet frame handling and all sorts of things if you want to go down that route. Which is kind of cool. I will certainly be playing with that. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of having our von Neumann accelerator in the form of an STM. 32F7 running at 200 megahertz. When it comes to dealing with things like a, uh, you know, micro IP stack, it's going to handle it much better than, a, you know, a soft core is, and use a lot less resources, as you can imagine. So do you want to go on that list for uh, the first build, Weston? Okay. Um, What was the other thing that we spoke about tile-wise? I think it was just CAM, wasn't it? The other thing that you mentioned on the previous occasion. We've got two options with CAM. We can put it on the tile. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can put it on the USB connector if we wanted to. I know that sounds weird, but it shares the same pins. I'll tell you something else that I was looking at the other day. Um, 
Where was it? It might have been when I was looking at some Rust uh, async implementations. I'm sure um, someone had done a uh, Ethernet CDC USB. And I've used those before. Those are quite handy sometimes. Particularly when you're testing networking. Um, I haven't seen a how version of that yet. But I did see an async version using, I think it was Embassy. Uh, and I think it was aimed, in that case, it was aimed at a, one of the NRF STM, sorry, one of the NRF ARM chips, I think. Their USB. Mm. Right, okay. Um, if anyone else needs any, let me know down on Discord this week and anyone that's watching um, this post. Let me know on Discord and I'll add you to the core development build. Right, so uh, what else have I done? Oh, Ipo saying, have you ever thought about a garden much like Pimeroni's? Well, I was thinking that the blades could be good for some of that, I post. But it depends what you want to do with it. Depends what you want to put, what you want to interface to. For things like uh, gyrate, gyros, IMUs, that kind of stuff. They put the, those will go on microblades. Um, they're kind of ideal for that kind of dimension of expansion, if you see what I mean. And things like, um, you know, time of flight sensors, that kind of thing. How many, how many microblades? So on Black Ice Next, we have four microblade slots. So you can add four microblades and an SD card. Um, well, they fit together snugly. Let's put it that way. That's going to be interesting to test um, with the prototypes I've ordered. They may be a bit tight to start with, but basically the width of the blade, the standard width of the microblade is limited in order that they can live next to each other. They tend to be fairly narrow. It's basically dictated by the size of the holder. So they're the width of a holder, effectively. So that's wider than the SD card. But the width of the holder, because the holders literally are adjacent to each other. Uh, I can't remember what the dimensions is. It's about 16 mil, I think, from memory, something like that. About 16 millimeters, I think, wide at their widest point. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully, there aren't any fat ones. <laughs> well, you could do a double fat one, but it uses two slots. Um, or you could make one fat in one dimension, but you could only put it in a certain blade if that was, or socket. Uh, Laurie's saying gluten-free project uses Ethernet, Verilog stack. Yeah, that's a good point. How are they talking to it? Are they talking to it? 
Uh, I forget. Are they running the code for the Ethernet on a soft core on a hard core? I can't remember now. I've forgotten. Uh, we can also just, get, I've made some changes to some of the code as well, so I need to uh, just let you guys know what I've done on that and what I'm doing at the moment, what I'm working on. Um, on Black Crab and I've been changing some of the HDL around as well. Um, and doing spy to RM2 wouldn't be too difficult. And we could even do QSPY as well, don't forget, Laurie. That's um, actually faster in some cases. Um, I think it's gateware only in RM2 or variant. Wait a minute, didn't they have... Oh, what did they have? Didn't they have a GM2 interface from the FPGA to some core or something? I can't. I can't remember what the core was. So, hmm. right. So, what else have I worked on then? I should just cover this stuff. Um. Last look at Air London said, Sorry, what was the question? We were trying to work out, um, Laurie was saying that there was Ethernet on the gluten free, but how was it operated? Was it operated directly by the soft core or was it operated externally through the FPGA? I think that was a question. Uh, one of the things that I've changed actually is I've been updating the MyStorm board. So I've up updated the um, Logic Bus PCF file. So it's a bit more up to date now. I've got the tiles and stuff defined in there and the clock. Uh, I've got QSPY, I think it's defined in there, but I need to double check that. And the LED. Um, the other thing I was doing is we've got some. Uh, we had a blink example, uh, which is this. Um, so I've changed that to work with the um, ICE logic board. I've also updated the make file and I've stolen a whole bunch of stuff from Laurie's um, make files. Because what I needed to do was update the um, Come on, show me the controller, there we go. Because um, I wanted to update, because the old make files for when you were doing Verilog and stuff uh, still used Arachne PNR. So I, I've converted those over 
to the uh, next PNR versions. So I just cribbed some of, uh, copied and pasted some of um, uh, Laurie's make files. So you'll probably recognize that Laurie, although it's got our solar pad license on it. Um, so I've updated that because that was on the list to do. So the blink example is now next PNR based and that's updated the default build file if anyone needs to do that for Verilog or use that for Verilog. The other thing I was working on, remember before we were working on the tile tester and what we were doing is we were programming the um, FPGA and then activating the um, QSBI and then counting up on the LEDs. Um, well, unfortunately, that version is the old version of the tiles with the LEDs on. Um, so that is upside down. So I've converted that over now. And so what I'm doing is I'm now done a version of um, seven segment file. So that now has the QSPI support. So now when I build this, which is what I'm doing here, um, it programs it and then you can see it counting. That counting is being done in um, that's naught to 255 in Black Crab. That's a QSPI set of transactions. That's not HDL that's doing the count there. That's just receiving QSPI data that's, that's counting up. Um, and I started cleaning up some other bits as well. But if we switch now, the other thing I wanted to talk about briefly is talk about Oh, would you add them and leave it? When I change one, it changes the other. I don't really understand that. It should be pointing to two different instances. Let's just switch to Black Crab. So in Black Crab now, the other thing I've done is I've refactored some stuff. So let me just switch to that. Lost the damn window now. Sorry, I've made this a bit large. Let me reduce this slightly. Can you read this, guys? Um, oh, our, our land is just responding to the um, question about the Ethernet. The interface is M2. It is supported by the 80, same 53, the SAM, sorry, 80 SAM 53 on the ICE 40 up 5k it is Verilog is this yeah I'm not sure that does answer the question so are you talking to the one minute hmm. so when you're sending things over Ethernet are those being generated from the SAM or are those generated by themselves in the FPGA? I guess was a question now. Um, so on the black software, uh, black crab software, one of the things we did before 
Um, so I'm just trying to clean some of this up now. So before, if you look at the USB task here, it went on quite a way and it had all the programming in. So I've refactored all that out now. So this programming part here, uh, which is all this stuff that's commented out, I've now uh, refactored that out. and put it into the FPGA um, structure. So the FPGA structure uh, now has some state, among other things, and number of bytes, because what it does, it has to keep track of um, what's going on. So we now call program, every time we get data in, um, from the USB device it gets passed into here and basically then we've got a simple state machine for the programming so the FPGA state has a prolude first which automatic automatically does the signature detect which then resets and pulls down the select on the um, FPGA then it moves into the body state uh, and here we're just sending the bytes across for the actual image until it reaches the known end for the byte size. Then it goes on to post and then on, at last, when it's called in the last state, I, it's gone into post, it cleans everything up. So it has a delay, it sends some clearing uh, data to clear the serial uh, path and it deselects the chip select and then returns to the original value state ready for the next programming time. So that's all now in the FPGA code rather than just sitting out on the USB side. The reason I wanted to do that was because um, I need, um, what I want to work on here is um, doing the command interface. So I want to talk about that briefly. Um, Alan says RXTX is implemented in Verilog by getting Getinub. Uh, still not tested. Um, and Laurie's replying. Yeah. So um, remember we spoke last time that we were going to implement a command-based control. So the idea is basically when you communicate with the uh, Black Ice NXT over USB, the first thing you do is you've, the first byte you send is your command byte. Um, and then... You, you'd follow that with information such as the number of bytes you were going to send. So for example, you could have a, uh, um, you could send some data to the bus, you know, inside um, a memory map bus inside the FPGA over QSPI, in which case so what you could say is you could write and then an address which was relevant for the uh, um, bus write and then however many, you know, the length of the data followed by the data itself. So the commands you could have are things like read and write, if we just stick to write for the moment. Um, and then another command could be an individual register write, which is a single byte type transfer, which would be, you know, the write command followed by, or write byte, um, which is just followed by um, either a byte or two bytes, because this could e either be 8-bit or 16-bit, I haven't decided yet. Uh, probably 16 is probably going to end up being the best way of doing it. Um, and then you have things like um, maybe a flash command or a program flash command, um, 
which would enable you to store something on the flash inside Black Crab, etc. Now, one of the things I was talking about is if we have these commands, so we, we, we'd effectively have from 0, 0 to FF different commands, right? 255 different commands. But I'm going to reserve the FF command because I want to keep that for backward compatibility with the Black Ice programming. So if I reserve a FF, if somebody tries to program this just like they would Black Ice, it can be made to work because those bit files always start with FF. So if I, you know, serialized the bit image file to the USB, the first, first byte will be FF. So it would automatically go into calling the auto mode which is the auto magic mode. So, to go, so that, that way we get backward compatibility. And then if you sent a different command, obviously it wouldn't enable the auto magical. It would do whatever the implementation was for that, that command. And I think this way we get the best of both worlds. Um, what do you think of that, Laurie? And everyone else for that matter. Let me just get some more water, I don't know. Focus for gluten was implementing UDP. Yeah. Ah, Laurie likes my backward compatibility plan. Cool. So I've got to test that. Um, which is one of the reasons I refactored that code to make it easy to be able to do that. Coolio. Right, so I'll go ahead with that then. Good. So now, when I'm sending this here, so what I'm doing is I'm calling IcePROG, which is basically ICE is an FPGA structure and implementation set of traits. Um, so I'm calling that with whatever we've received over USB. And then that will normally return false until it's programmed uh, the FPGA, in which case it will return true. So if it returns true, then it will then proceed. It will have a delay, but it will send the test bytes over QSPI, which is how that's working. That's why it's counting up on the um, seven segment display example so if we look at that um, so here, here's the piece where it decides to turn return true or false so if the FPGA state is post in other words it's been through the programming of the ice first uh, it finishes it off and then returns true otherwise if it's not in the uh, post state yet then uh, it returns false. And then the QSPI test is really just simple. It's a set of QSPI transactions um, that basically, you know, are controlled by a for loop that counts from zero up to 255, which is why you see it counting up to 255 on the um, Come on. 
Yeah. I should replace that with the delay as well. Because it counts very quickly. In fact, I think it does it more than once because it may well have data left over. Here. It may call that more than once. I'm thinking. I need to check that. Laurie's saying, currently we have a diverse set of people interested in Black Eyes NXT and everyone seems to want different things. Indeed. Well, hopefully people can work on different things. I'm certainly not going to do all of it. You know, the whole point of this is people will work on different parts of it. I hope, obviously, where I can. Or set ball rolling. There's no way I'll be able to do it all. Not for everyone. That's the point of getting, you know, a bunch of people involved early on. It's because they want to be able to do certain things. And they're going to put in the effort, you know, with testing and a bit of development and stuff as well. Before we let it loose on the rest of the world. Lois Trifling. So can Etherbat high quality audio seem to be similar requirements? True. All tile based, I think. I mean it would be possible by the way to do a audio microblade. However the problem comes with the connectors. Micro blades are not very good with larger connectors. You can probably only fit really small connectors on the micro blade. Practically speaking. So tile will probably be better. If we did an industrial audio tile, we would need more detail on how people wanted to drive those. Well, Al did suggest that he might be into the doing some of the audio stuff, possibly. I'm not sure I'd put audio on the industrial tile. I mean, we can spend some time talking about it now, Laurie. That's a good idea where people, you know, people let me know suggestions. Now's a really good time. 
because I've got to start working on the new audio, sorry, the new um, tiles as well, so we can get some prototypes made. I'm probably going to be making tiles every month for the God knows how long, till we've covered our bases. Yeah, I w you probably wouldn't want to combine audio and industrial at the same time. I mean, there are other things you can do as well. Um, so you could do a multi Ethernet tile. So you could do like, um, put a switch chip. Is it a switch chip? You can get chips that have multiple RM2s on them. And then you talk to them using RM2 and stuff. That's another possibility. If you wanted multi ethernet. Um, you, you wouldn't want to use that for like EtherCAT, and I'm not going to touch EtherCAT, not for some time, that's tricky. Because of all of the intellectual property around it, and licensing requirements. Well, the other possibility is you combine CAN with things like 485 and 422 and keep the Ethernet separate. That's another possibility. I'm not sure what the best combination is, really. Um, yeah, I mean. We'll probably do more than one battery tile. Um, there's a quite, um, I did see there's a relatively low cost way of doing for smaller batteries, an MPPT come charger solar. Um, I will have to dig it up. I haven't done any work on that stuff for a while. But I have done work on that before, so I shall have to dig out some of my old um, designs and notes. It really depends what capacity you want battery wise, depends what you're driving. You know, if you were in an industrial design situation and you were driving motors, for example, you're going to need a lot more cells, or at least higher capacity cells, compared to just having enough battery power for something to run remotely, you know. Um, depends on what its consumption is like. You know, if you're driving heavier heavier loads you're going to use those loads up a lot more quickly you know in any kind of motorized control situation Yeah, managing two cells is pretty easy. It's when you start moving up to like four and eight cells that it gets really tricky and expensive. 
from a battery management point of view. Also, you then have to move towards a more discrete MPPT type solution. Because the uh, current carrying capacity for doing the charging um, steps up quite a lot. But um, as long as you're going for a relatively small couple of cell batteries, then uh, you can probably use off the shelf uh, battery cell measurement chips and also some of the MPPT chips rather than having to do it discreetly. And you can turn those developments around fairly swiftly. But yeah, two cells LiPo or two cells lithium ion. Um, fairly straightforward, as long as they're not too high capacity. Um, Yeah, that, I mean, there are lots of options, really, on the battery and solar side. We need to find something that's fairly simple and economical to start with in terms of, you know, relatively low capacity, but good enough to maybe run a few motors, that kind of thing, before we think about doing the bigger ones. Because those will cover the small power consumption scenario as well as you know the very low power scenarios you don't have to change the hardware much for those you're basically just changing what batteries you plug in and what panels you you plug in uh, the MPPT does the um, magic in terms of efficiency in terms of conversion because they are, you know, software set up or software controlled. Uh, Laurie asked an interesting question. Talking about gluten, uh, the gluten free stuff. I mean, one reason that you might want the FPGA to handle some of the uh, Ethernet framing is rather than directly have the microcontroller do it, is you can have the FPGA do all sorts of filtering, for example, so that it doesn't bother the, um, the microcontroller unless it's a conversation that it's really interested in. Because they can become, you know, interrupt heavy if you're not careful. If you put it on onto a network that has quite a lot of traffic, for example. I guess. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, Old London also says, I'd say even if not a tile as a module. But you may as well do it as a tile. The, the good thing about doing it as a tile is you've got direct access into the power bus of the ILB. As well as all the control signals as well. So you, you get some good benefits by putting it on a tile rather than just doing it externally. And you're right, they can be pricey. They don't have to be that pricey. But it depends, you know, what your requirements are. There really is a large range that you can tackle. I mean, you could even do power management on the mezzanine if you wanted. So you could kind of have something like the Black Ice NXT, but more industrially oriented. There's nothing stopping you doing that. But that, that, that's a lot more complex to, to go that far, obviously. You still got access to the bus bars, but more importantly, on the mezzanine as well as, as on the tiles. <clears throat> but the main reason you want to do that is if if you were doing something a bit smarter, perhaps on the mezzanine, and you didn't want to use maybe the M, the uh, F7, but maybe you wanted to use something else. Let's have a look at what our London sent. Transceptor. So is that just an Ethernet pie on a stick that you're pointing to? I don't know what the uh, PHY is. Yeah. Just looking at what that controller is, is that? DP83848.
All of these um, fives are really difficult to get hold of right now. That's the TI one, isn't it? And sometimes they charge crazy prices for them at the moment because they're very difficult to get hold of. Yeah, I can't see any stock. The only places I can see stock of those parts of the fires themselves are through the um, scalpers and um, the more um, exotic Asian part suppliers that you don't always get guarantees with, <laughs> let's just say. And they charge some crazy prices. I can see uh, Windsource Electronics wants to charge you $14 for each one. And these are normally what, a uh, dollar, dollar thirty part? That's madness. Madness. And you don't necessarily know what you're getting from Windsource either. <sighs> yeah, none of the um, more authentic suppliers have any stock. Although, yeah, no, no. You can buy them on boards, but yeah, not buy parts. I don't know where these people at AliExpress got their parts from. Are they actually tight TI parts? Might not be. Interesting. Wow, look at the size of the pads on that TQFP. They're enormous. They hand solder them. Yeah. Um. Right, anything else on tiles? Because I'm about to call it otherwise. Um, this is what's used on the ULX3. That's an 8720, yeah. But that's going to be very similar to the 8710 in terms of drivers and stuff. And you can't get those either. How much do they want? Yeah, that's low cost. What is that? Is that um, uh, so that's a P mod version? I wonder where they're getting their chips from. Yeah, it's good. Good price. Where do they ship it from? Is that from China? Oh, you have to pay for your shipping. Yeah. Three or four weeks shipping, they seem to be quoting. It's coming from China somewhere, I guess. So some people have still got those chips. If they can make those boards, they must buy them in enormous quantities. Hmm. 
Right, any more questions regarding what we've covered today? Um, or tiles and stuff that need to be um, planned? Or the developer kits? Anything we've discussed? What's this microchip? Oh yeah, I love the total inventory. It's mostly naught. Inventory history. So in October they had a whole crap load. There was 10,000, which went within less than a month. But the sum appeared in April. But that's very short lived. There's only 6,000 in April total inventory. I know there's a shortage because everyone and their dog's been moaning about getting hold of um, any Ethernet files. Um, are they showing stock now? They're showing 13,000. How can that be? The chart below doesn't show that. Oh, that's because it doesn't show May. Because we're still in May. Yeah. That's direct from microchip if you can get them. Interesting. Wow. I haven't used these before. Shoot me. Interesting. I don't normally buy is that that let me just click on that so presumably this is direct from microchips fulfillment uh, our team is here to help you search it says no products were found matching your search if you actually click on it how very helpful Have they sold out already? Is that stock out of date? How annoying. That's really weird, Erlander, because when you click on it and when you go to the microchip, it says it doesn't find them. I'm wondering if that is actually their stock. Oh no, it's found it. It depends which link you click on. That's really weird. Um, It's saying not recommended for new designs. For the uh, KS78041.
in stock they're saying they have 2,000 they've got more coming apparently in July but not recommended for new designs interesting um, but at least they've got some Uh, what's the pricing? One forty six, one thirty six, something like that. Marilyn says, in these times you have to design thinking of replacing components. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it certainly is. Or you have to get the stock before you sell any boards. Which is the way I've been approaching it recently. Oh, well, you end up in Crapsville, Arizona, and you look like an idiot. Interesting about those uh, microchip fies. We keep that tab open. I might query them about that. Oh yeah, you don't know what price it's going to be in the future. I have no idea any more than you have a, you know, idea about availability. One leads to the other, unfortunately. You know. But yeah, my my technique right now is get the components before you make stuff. Not the other way around, because you'll just end up with egg on your face, literally. Know that you can make at least, you know, however many that you think you're going to need in the near future. It's the only way. Otherwise you just end up pissing people off that think that you're going to do something and then it just doesn't appear because you keep saying, oh, I can't source the component. You know, at some point they just get frustrated even though everyone's in the same boat. With inflation how it is, it's likely to go up rather than down anyhow, quite frankly, irrespective of availability. was I going to mention? Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to talk about something to do 
Oh, I've got the chips for the um, motor drivers. I found a few more, so I might be able to make more than one of those test boards, which would be cool. And I've, I've got some of the stepper ones as well, but I need to finish designing the stepper controller one. But I found a bunch of chips. I went through my drawers and found a bunch that I've forgotten about. Yeah, I can see I can see that conversation, Laurie. With getting oob. I did think about using RM2 at one point. Uh, one issue with going down that route is there's a lot less chips that have RM2 support microcontroller wise so it makes interfacing ha harder in some cases so for example the f7 we're using doesn't have an rm2 h7s i've got through i mean it has some advantages going down that route because it's duplex um, half duplex. Yeah, I did think about going down that route. I think I was constrained by the microcontrollers at the time. And the um, QSPI just seemed like a more flexible choice in that regard. I think I can hear Twinkle again. Yes, I can. What are you after, Twinkle? You want some more food? Um, the other thing with going uh, either RM2 or M2 is there is a bigger overhead peripheral wise on the microcontroller. It's a bit more intensive. The good thing about QSPI is it has very little overhead. And low latency as well, depending on what frequency you clock it. So on the F7s we can clock it up to 108 megahertz without a problem. In fact the issues come on the FPGA side with the uh, less powerful chips. Uh, 
Um, no, we're not using the 16-bit data bus. I am considering still using the 16-bit data bus for the ECP5, but I'm not decided yet. Just using the FMC. Because if if you if you use the FMC sixteen bit. Um, and you were using it with the H7, you can run it at about 133 megahertz, which gives you about 266 max megabytes per sec between the two. But you have to be um, careful about pin choices and stuff. That's the, uh, that's the issue really with that. The other advantages of going the FMC route is you can actually memory map, which is useful. I mean, you can do that with QSPI as well. Well, you finished all your biscuits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was I was planning it. I just didn't implement, Laurie. I didn't have enough pins really for the way it was organised with the um, Black Ice NXT. I'll have a few more choices potentially with the ECP five because I'm going to approach it slightly differently. Or at least I'm considering doing something slightly different. It buys me a bit more flexibility. So that you can do that if you need to. I mean, you could do it with the IS-40, with the ILB, you know, by changing the mezzanine. You know, if you take away the blades, you've got enough pins to do um, you know, uh, an FMC interface, potentially. The memory mapping can help because if you memory map for example what you can do is you can um, you can build the how directly to support the peripheral bus inside the FPGA using an intermediary like SVD effectively which is kind of handy. Right, anyhow. I think I'm going to call it for this stream. Um, I probably won't stream again till next Wednesday. 
So I've got a bit of a busy week. I've got to start getting some of these things built for you guys. Um, tile wise, I've got to do some more of this uh, black crab stuff. Get the command stuff working on that. Um, so it's going to be a busy week. Right. Well, thank you for joining me. And um, it's getting exciting now. We get to try the next one, the final stuff next week. With any luck, depending on shipping, etc., etc. Right, ciao, folks.